this evening's free trial lesson. Let me introduce myself. My name is Marcus. I'm one of the MTT coaches of the Academy of Poker. And yeah, I'll be today's host or presenter of our trial lesson where I'm uh, telling you about how to start winning in poker. Let me make sure that you can hear me properly, quickly. Yeah, that does sound good. Uh, let me know yeah, if there's any settings wrong or if you can see anything uh, from my side, it should look fine. So now I'll be just giving you a few seconds or like a minute to set every to prepare and come in the chat and so on. So yeah, just waiting briefly before I start with uh, today's trial lesson. All right, Twitch is also set up. Looks good. And yeah, so both chats should look fine. Um, yeah, I think we'll just get into it now and uh, yeah, enjoy the presentation. Make sure to also subscribe us in YouTube, follow us on our Twitch channel, I'm streaming there currently like maybe, uh, so probably like once a week currently, one one time streaming, one time, uh, so playing online, playing tournaments, and then also doing uh, this webinar kind of stuff where I'm doing an educational stream. Um, yeah, and then YouTube videos, you see we have almost uh, you, uploaded uh, we have new videos almost every day or if even every day so uh, make sure to subscribe there and also uh, click the link in the description below if you want to get your free training course now uh, we have a pretty nice offer currently and yeah just get in touch with one of our managers if you click the link in the description that will give that will put you into our website and then you can get in touch with one of our managers also if you want to you can get some individual coachings with me. And for that same way, just get in touch with one of our managers. Uh, but now let's head into this because this is the free trial lesson. So you can see, I will tell you about what you will get into uh, if you get the course. And that said, you can get it for free currently. It has a value of 300 euros. And I'll, as I said, in here, I will uh, put that up to show you what is in there why is it worth 300 euros and why you can get it for free but now let's start if uh, whenever you have any questions just let me know i'll see them pop up in the chat so we will never you don't have to wait for it that long all right so how to start winning so of course make sure to watch it until the end because we have the information about our our course and I think uh, you will really like what you hear there, so stay tuned. Um, first of all, so of course it's hard to like, how do you start winning in poker? There are some common problems. You know, don't know which tournaments to play, so which are the better tournaments? If you should go for small average field sizes, big average field sizes, how what buy-ins can you play, and so on. Um, of course, how much money do you need? Um, there's something called bankroll management. I will be talking about that in this uh, slides later and yeah how much do you need for what and what what helps you to play profitably you know of course also you're, that you're not sure where you should play there's yeah 
tens of t tens, 20, 10, 20, 30 sites probably you can go for. You know, of, of course, the bigger ones, but maybe also the smaller ones might have their positive aspects, right? Um, there's software involved. When you play online, you always have to work with software because that's like the status quo currently. How do you work with that? I will tell you about it. Uh, where can you find useful information? So, you know, you have books, you have YouTube videos, you have Twitch right now, you have coachings, you have online forums and so on and so forth. So I'll give you a quick overview of that. And all in all, how can you grow the fastest way? Nobody is likes to be, likes to be patient and everybody wants to make uh, as much money as possible in the fastest time possible. Of course, that's not always possible and it is really hard, but uh, yeah. I think with our video, with our current uh, or today's webinar, we can help you a little bit to make that happen faster. So first of all, why do you even play poker? There's two things you can do. You can play it as entertainment. You have a normal job and after your job or during the weekend, you like to put in some money. You either go in the casinos or you play online, put some money in and try to play a little bit. Or you do it as a job, so you do it for income, and then this is the only source for you to make money. And of course, there are pretty, pretty big differences in that. If you start as playing it as entertainment, um, I think the most important thing is here to admit exactly that. Um, you should not worry about it. and. What's the most important thing? Don't play for less money. As I said, you probably have a normal nine to five job or you work in a completely different field and you make money for that. You have to have the money for your family, for paying rent or for paying the house, for paying groceries, for paying insurance and so on and so forth. And then you have some, some things you can use for your hobby. You either go to the fitness, uh, to the gym, uh, um, every every week and you pay something for that you have maybe you play football you play basketball whatever and pay money for the club and stuff like that uh, if you then have if you don't have that and maybe poker is your number one hobby of course you can use the money for that but if you don't have enough money over especially if maybe you the job you're having um yeah you don't earn enough to have like a few hundred euros uh, over every month to play poker, then you should not invest that money. Or if you try, if you start, st if you still start playing, just use a bit of it, right? Like if you start with 20 euros, for example, because that's something you could afford, it's still okay. I mean, with 20 euros, you can still start playing. There are 10, 20 cent tournaments that you can play and you should then go for that. Because in the end, it's, it should be about making progress and not about making that much, like not about making money in the first place. And if you're good at it, you can grow and you can just deposit this 20, 30 euros and start from there and then grow your bankroll. And all in all, have fun. I mean, as I said, if you do it as a hobby, I mean, you play football, you, you go watch your football clubs because you enjoy it and you have fun with it. You get a beer and stuff like that and you just enjoy watching that. Uh, if you play poker, you could do it as the same thing. I mean, you see this fella here right now, he's having a lot of fun. He's having a sip of whiskey there and yeah, just enjoys the time. And especially in casinos, if you just play like a small tournament and I said, you can afford it and it doesn't really matter if you lose that money because you know you're able to lose that money, just enjoy it. Poker for income, it's a bit different. It's the same thing. You should admit it, it is your job. So you have to take it seriously and you have to work on your game. If you just think, okay, I'm just going to play every day for eight hours and I'm probably going to make enough money. That won't be, that won't be possible. You have to study. So you have to, as I said, you have to use software and all those different things. And yeah, I know it's hard, but yeah, that is just the way it is. Uh, another thing for that is like the time you can use. So as you see, it, it can be between three or to 10 hours, roughly. If you go, because three hours, that might be a thing that you have if, the, if you play just in the evening, let's say from eight to 11, you came home from work at five or six, to get some dinner, maybe do some sports and so on. And then you have some time for that. You can then, sh or you should play multi-table sit and goes or Tobo tournaments because they have a fast structure. Uh, and for, especially for multi-table sit and goes, the software mostly even tells you how long you can, how long this tournament even goes. 
so they tell you, oh, this is going to go for, an average goes for three, three and a half hours. Then you know, I can play it because it will end at a certain point. Uh, that's not the case for regular speed tournaments, and therefore it's a bit hard. And those, as, as you see, might take up to 10 hours. Uh, when I won a bigger tournament, I think I, it took 13 hours for that one. Uh, and that was with a slow structure. And if you do it as a job, you play it full time, of course, you're going to go for those regular speed ones because there the variance is not that big. And that's exactly what you also need to make money that you don't have that big of a variance or at least a smaller variance than in the turbo tournaments. Um, you have different types of MTTs here as well. So as I said, you have the turbo and the regular speed ones. You also have hyper turbo, which are even faster. And those are also split into different types. You see here like the four most known one right now. You have the normal freeze out, meaning you pay your entrance fee once and you get chips for that. And whenever you have no chips left, you're, you're out of the tournament, that's it. If you make it into the best 10, 15%, depends on, depending on the software or the tournament, uh, you get some money in return because then you made it into the money. Pretty simple. Uh, and that's the most mostly used one since the start of poker really. Uh, you have knockout tournaments. In knockout tournaments, it's pretty much the same. The only difference is that the buy-in you pay is split 50-50 between the normal regular price pool, which is the same as in the freeze out, and a knockout price pool. Uh, you can enter money, you can get money out of this knockout price pool by busting out your opponents. Uh, if you play it online, you see they have like a small amount above their avatar or something like that. And you see how much money you get if you if you bust them out. There's a difference between normal knockout and a progressive KO. Because in the progressive KO, the bounty increases with more opponents. Uh, you, with the more opponents you bust, the higher, gets, the higher is your bounty. Um, that creates some pretty different... Yeah, style of place and also it's yeah you can just call way more than you could normally do if it's for bounties and so on but we would talk about and talk about that in one of our premium courses if you decide to join our course uh, the next one is the satellite satellite is a tournament where you qualify for either a bigger tournament or you can online or live meaning you could, for example, if you want to play the Sunday Million, but you can't afford $100 tournaments currently, you play like a $5 satellite and you can win a ticket for the Sunday Million. But what you can also do, uh, for example, now in December, uh, because I live here in Prague, there's the EPT Prague. And then you can play maybe like a 55 euro tournament or something like that as well and try to get a package for this live tournament. And then you can win the ticket, so the buy-in entry to this tournament, plus hotel costs, for example, or even flight costs. And that's a pretty nice thing because normally, so the EPT National, let's say, is a 1K tournament, and normally I would not, I could not play that out of my normal bankroll. But if I can qualify it over online tournaments, then of course I can try it because I can just play it in my normal schedule where I normally play my, my five, 10, $20 tournaments and then I can put in some satellites. Unfortunately for me, it's not possible here in the Czech Republic because we're not allowed to play satellites online, but that's another thing. And you, I mean, if you live in Germany or in, every, in another country that's kind of close by, you can of course still go for that. Last but not least, the rebuy tournament. It starts out as a normal freeze-out as well, but the difference here is if you lose all your chips or you are uh, below a certain amount of chips, you can just pay the entry fee again and you get an additional chip stack. This ends uh, after a specific time and then you have an add-on as well where you can again pay uh, the entry fee one more time and you again get additional, additional chips. You don't have to do the add-on, but normally it grants you a bit more chips than you would normally get for the normal buy-in, so it kind of makes sense. Uh, the thing to go for in rebuy is probably when you don't, when your bankroll is not that big, you should not uh, go higher than like one or two rebuys. If you can afford it, you can go for more. But again, that would be something we talk about in one of the premium courses uh, where we talk about exactly the 
styles of tournaments that are available. Let's move on to the bankroll management. Uh, I, as you, if you follow me, I already talked about the bankroll management. Um, it is really important. It helps us to protect ourselves from losing our whole bankroll if we just play too high. Let's say we have $1,000, but we want to play $100 tournaments. Then we can play 10 of them uh, because of the variance involved in online tournaments. You might not cash one of them and suddenly your whole bankroll is gone. If you would play just $10 tournaments, you could play 100 of them before before all your money is gone. And then you see what the difference is. So the, the money you have, you have to split it up for at least a few hundred buy-ins. And in our case, the minimum you should have is 150 to 200. So I advise like 200 buy-ins at least. And this is already also, this is just if you play normal speed tournaments. If you play turbo or hyper turbo tournaments, because they're Again, like the levels are getting are faster, the chip stacks are smaller, so there's more all-ins and there's bigger variants. Um, then it's harder to make money in those, and therefore there you should have 300 buy-ins. If you do a mix of it, uh, you can go in the middle like 250, but I'd always still say go for 300 buy-ins. Um, the thing here is it's like the average buy-in. So let's say we have $4,000 and you with 300 binds you could play like yeah you could play like roughly 11 like 12 maybe sometimes let's say 11 dollars if that's the average then it's okay so if you play like two dollar five dollar tournaments you can of course also put in maybe on a sunday where the price pools are so big put in like a bigger 22 or a mini sunday million but the average buy-in should not be higher so that you have your 300 binds that we are talking about so keep that in mind uh of course, I said you can take shots sometimes, but in general, try to stick to your to your average buy-in and don't go higher. Um, you can do it when your bankroll is growing. So if you stick to that and your bankroll grows, then you can go for bigger bigger turn uh, bigger buy-ins. Kind of easy actually. Now um, a little something about me. So I was born in Germany, lived there for most of my life uh, in Bremen, northern part of Germany. And then I moved to Prague. So I, I moved here because of my girlfriend and because I love her much. I love her a lot. So I moved here and yeah, find the opportunity. I was playing poker since I'm 18. Actually, I started when I was 13 playing with friends and started playing for money when I was 18. And yeah, have been playing quite a lot. I liked it a lot. But never really got into it that professionally and as you see here so i started playing online a lot as as i just said like i put in a, a bit of money won something and then cash it out buy some things i mean i was still uh still in school and so on or was starting my studies and so on and so forth so i wanted to go for a lot of different uh things and i just didn't put a lot of money so i didn't take it that professionally um also yeah just wanted to to buy some stuff then the difference also was for online um because you see like here in our life versus online uh playing online for me makes more or, or made more sense first of all there wasn't really live casino in bremen or close around so they had one but it wasn't really good and the buy-ins were really high so i said like if there's a 200 300 euro tournament uh, for that money i can online i can play like 30 40 tournaments roughly and also if I bust one, because like my first live tournament I played, I got a pretty bit, pretty bad cooler. I think it was like aces versus tens or something like that for a pretty huge pot. And he spiked the 10 on the river and then I was out. That's it for the day. I couldn't do anything. If the, if the same thing happens online, it doesn't matter for me because I have another, I have a lot of other tournaments open and you see like leaving the casino in a bad mood because of one tournament is different than busting one tournament online and still having like 10 to 15 other tournaments open, right? So therefore, it just made more sense for me. How does online poker work in general? So of course, there's players that deposit money. Uh, I mean, the last time I deposited was, I don't know how long ago, it's been it's been quite quite a long time since uh, since the last time I deposited something, but you know what I mean. If, especially if you're a hobby player, uh, you just deposit sometimes, play 
some tournaments on a Saturday, on a Sunday or whatever or in the evening and play it. So what we do is when we go for a tournament, we play, pay some rake. You've seen that online when there's an $10, $11 tournament, that $10 go into the um, prize pool and $1 is the tournament fee or as we call it, the rake. That is for the poker rooms. As you see here, three examples, Party Poker, 8 at 8 Poker, Poker Stars. And yeah, that's the money they take for providing the software that for us, the tournaments, the players, and so on and so forth. And now I'm going to give you a small overview about the, yeah, about the poker rooms you can go for. As you know, Poker Stars, biggest, biggest poker website. Uh, they've been here about for about the longest, I think. They have the biggest pros mostly, and they have the biggest prize pools, the biggest uh, tournament series, and so on. So as you see, the quality of the software is so high. It's the best software around, I'd say. The prize pools are really high, most especially on Sundays. You get really high guarantees, and it offers you a wide range of tournaments. Uh, you can, as I said, you can start from playing two cents or five cents tournaments up to a few thousand dollars. Uh, you can play all different kinds of tournaments. Uh, you can go for if you like Pot Limit Omaha, if you like Pot Limit Omaha High Low, uh, used to seven single draw, Raz, Start, and so on. You can play all of those things on PokerStars. The bad thing here is that the average poker player is pretty good on PokerStars because they also, of course, want a piece of this big, big cake, right? And therefore, also the average field size in the tournaments is rather big. So it's pretty, there's a pretty crowded place on PokerStars and your opponents aren't that bad in general or in average. Of course, they are also bad players, but it's hard, especially if you go a bit higher in the binds, to find players that aren't that good. If we go to Party Poker, they are doing a lot for the last years um, to yeah get closer to PokerStars. Um, they... In, other than other than poker stars they have a lot of overlays in tournaments because they offer so much to get new players and they offer also rake back and you see it goes up to like 40 percent and poker stars so for me in the czech republic we have a lot of um, restrictions currently and i think my current rake back is yeah like not even worth talking about it's probably like one or two percent or something like that and i don't play i mean i do play quite a lot of course they are a lot, a lot of players that play more, uh, but I, I'd say I'll, I'll already play quite a lot. Um, but yeah, so that would be a thing if you like play that much you, to move to party poker just because you get a lot of rake back. That is money. So as you see, you pay you pay rake, and because you play so much, they give you like a little gift on that. So if you play for if you produce a current uh, a specific amount of rake then you get a, some money back. And that's called rake back because the money, like you invest $1,000 in rake and that you might get like 20% back. So they pay you a $200 uh, gift or like a, as a challenge. And you, if you reach the points, you get like $200 back. And then because it's called rake back because you paid $1,000 in rake for the tournaments, but you get like $200 in, small, in a small present or in a challenge you uh, reached back. Uh, uh, linked to the overlays are also the low average field sizes and the weaker players. So on Party Poker, as I said, they try a lot to get new players to have really nice um, competitions or events and so on. So they also get a lot of new players. They have banned, um, they have banned the HUD, for example, and therefore they try to get yeah more amateur players or more hobby players in there and offer bigger, uh, try to offer more and more bigger price pools um, in regard to the buy-ins. And yeah, and they are okay with having a lot of overlays. Also, which, yeah, I like kind of the most about Party Poker, even though the software might sometimes be not the best, it's just the Party Poker Live dollars they have. Um, I have the King's Casino close by, so it's like one and a half hours away, and you can play satellites to win this Party Poker Live dollars, and you can use these for for example for me i can use them in the king's casino for almost every tournament which is awesome so that's the thing like to like grind these tournaments the satellites to get some party poker live dollars to use them in live tournaments which is almost like a satellite that i earlier talked about uh the disadvantage on party poker is as i said like the software is not the best and the schedule is kind of unstable meaning there's 
a lot of changes and um, yeah i'll be doing a webinar on how to put up your schedule how to prepare for mtts and like in this case it's kind of hard because there would be a lot of changes and if you have your excel sheet you're using or your prepared schedule then it's annoying if there's so many changes um, two other sites which i'll briefly talk about 888 poker um, also average field size is not that big and the players are not that not that good in average and also you can qualify for the world series of poker if you like to um, they are the official partner so they're running satellites for that starting from very low amount of uh, dollars to get there which is pretty nice uh, on the other side the guaranteed price pools there are not that big so you don't win that much money and you need to you need to win the, or you need to have good results in tournaments more often than on bigger sites where you just have to have like one big score and then you make a lot of money uh number four also natural eight uh, belongs to gg poker i kind of like this site um i got to it when i watched some streamers playing on there um it's an asian website so there's a lot of asian players on there uh, the average field size and the players are low or let's like the average field size is low and the players are also in average pretty weak um, they do also run quite a lot of competitions especially for cash game players if you're interested in that uh, but also have like the gg series which is going like over all the gg poker um, software you can use and yeah they are pretty nice and also the rake back system is pretty good i think you can get even more to over 100 percent rake back if you play really much there uh disadvantage here again the guaranteed price pools are not that big and the schedule is not that big as well like the tournaments um yeah they are not happening that often so even if i would if i put them in my complete schedule like for example last sunday i played probably like 100 even if even more tournaments and i try to take everything from natural aid on there that's in my buy-in range and i ended up with only playing like maybe like 15 tournaments from natural aid within a range of 10 11 hours or so so therefore you can't play that much but again like the because the players are not that good there or on average not that good of course they're also good players in there you can still make quite good money and especially if you don't play that much you can just play one or two tables on those and on, on that website and yeah enjoy it uh we talked about i talked about software a little bit and let me be a bit more specific here now so we have trackers uh trackers are programs or softwares that yeah track what you're playing so whenever you play a hand on a poker software uh for me like mostly poker stars because natural aid has their own hut in the software and party poker isn't allowing them anymore so mm, you have poker stars you play a hand and hold a manager puts that hand directly in their software you can look up then how you played what the result was and it also gives you some statistics on your play like how often you raise how often you three bet how often you fold to a three bet how often you defend your big blind and so on and so forth that's pretty nice and it's just so 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 helpful to see those stats because it helps you to see where your problems are and where you need to improve your game uh, for that you have also calculators you can have flopzilla for that or ic miser which is now even at the at the third version so ic miser 3 and yeah you can for that you can just go through hands and yeah calculate like how much for example how much equity those hands have or if a call or a, if an all-in or a fold in a specific situation is a plus expected value is minus expected value how much you would win or lose in the long run with those decisions and yeah as i said it just helps you a lot to figure out if you have problems for example you have you flop second pair in the big blind uh you with a flopzilla you can go through specific ranges uh that your opponent can have and what he will continue there and then you know how to play uh those yeah those hands throughout turner river and they just help you a lot which is what is even more better better are gto solvers so gto means um, game theoretical optimum and it shows you the yeah the computer calculated best way to play for that you have the simple post flop and simple pre flop simple pre flop yeah pretty or they're both pretty much self explaining so it shows you what to do in pre flop situations and simple post flop does the same for post flop so then again 
it uh, calculates and shows you what to what to bet, what not to bet, how much even to bet in specific situations on specific boards from a position with that hand or that range you have there. And yeah, in that way, whenever you have a yeah a hard decision or a spot where you're not sure what to do, you can use those programs. Of course, they cost some money, but I'm, I'm sure they're worth it. And yeah, you can just use them and see if the decisions you made were right or wrong and if you should change something. Also, it gives you can give you some really interesting perspectives, maybe that the solver then tells you to bet more than the pot on this situation, which you normally would never do. You always think, oh, I, sh I always go like for three quarters because I will get cold. But then the, the solver shows you, oh, yeah, go just two times the pot because whatever calls you when you bet 75% will also call you when you bet 200%. And yeah, that is pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, how can you learn poker? That's like, how, where do you get your informations, information from? And yeah, you have books. So books were used a lot earlier. I think nowadays they're not used that often. There are some books that are still up to date or where you can get a lot of information from. But yeah, I started with books when I was younger. Like I, I think I read my first one with 14 or 15 and have like three or four books in the end now that I read but then I switched over to something else and that's on the one side uh, VODs so video on demands uh, you can have them on YouTube you can have them on Twitch and yeah for example our YouTube channel we update um, or we bring new videos almost every day where you can learn some stuff we do reviews of tournaments we might make breakdowns of hands we give you some general tips we show you how the software works and yeah when i when i started when i had hold manager for the first time i had it like pretty early it was kind of hard to actually find content for that so you had to yeah teach yourself a lot of the things on your own or talk to the support a lot write emails instead of just watch a video where you type on in google like how does this and this work and google gives you the perfect answer for that right now I, other thing i used was forums um there's two plus two there's poker strategy and i think yeah almost everybody knows them they were used a lot but i think also nowadays they're not that often used now um, of course, you can maybe put, if you don't have any friends around that play poker with you, or at least interested in that and have some knowledge about it, uh, you can maybe post some hands there because you can get some feedback. Now, maybe Discord is a thing you can use for that. And of course, there are some, yeah, if you have like, if you're part of a community, a bigger one, like from a streamer or from a website or so, you will get help there. Uh, but in general, maybe it's, it takes more time. And last but not least, we have coaches, so people like me, um, I think make, of course, also a lot of sense uh, in regard or in comparison to the other three. Of course, they are probably the most expensive ones. But uh, yeah, what I learned is that they just also give you the most input. Like if you have a, if you have a question, instead of posting it in a forum or trying to find a video about it or trying to find the answer within a book, uh, the coach can you can ask it to him directly and he can, give, he can give you a direct answer and what i had during coach so when i took some coachings for example yeah he just opened up the software and showed me completely okay this is the this, you should do this because of this and this reason he showed it to me on softwares and another and some programs why this is the right decision and in that way i think you just learn the most also they will be the most honest with you uh to tell you Instead of making, yeah, this maybe this is okay or not, they can tell you, okay, this is completely wrong. You should do it this way because of this and this. And again, give you the perfect analysis about it. So I think that's uh, a pretty nice thing. And if you can afford it, uh, yeah, it's definitely worth it because you make the most progress out of it. Um, I think like the investments I did there were definitely worth it. Uh, what you can also have, as I said, like, coachings i like them now i'm a coach as i'm a coach now so i give coachings and yeah i kind i really like it um it helps me also to make sure i i'm so to make myself sure i know about these things so whenever i get a question i can also prepare the answers for that and then do some studying on my own uh but yeah that's why i'm offering it uh, as i said click the link in the description below to enter it and uh yeah 
what we talk about is different things. So first, if you if you want like 10 or 20 sessions with me, uh, we have a perfect structure for every type of player. So if you say, yeah, I'm pretty new, um, like I need a new hobby or so, I have some money to spare, I can invest it here and I'm willing to do, I know what to, like where to start, regard uh, if, if I know about the level you're at. So if you're a complete beginner, of course, then I'll just show you everything. If you know some stuff, we can start at, uh, we can start at, just yeah, like you know already about out uh, about about odds about poker uh, about pot odds and yeah just how the softwares more or less work so we can then start maybe with the softwares to make sure that you know everything about it and then go even more in detail and make some pretty pretty deep analysis about about hands make break uh, make breakthroughs um breakdowns of your hands and yeah just show you everything uh, also like then if you know exactly what you need so if you say yeah i just i need like i don't know i need like three four three four hours um because i have a problem in three bad pots i have problems playing out of the big blind i have problems from the button and so on so we can go specifically on that and yeah just try to perfectionize the way you play in that and also we can have a look at the rest because if you're sh like of course if if you're sure you're good in this in this situation you can still have a brief look and see if you do good in the others in the other parts and um yeah i think that way it just helps you a lot to improve and uh i mean if you do an investment for example if you invest in the stock market you know like you have to invest money to make money so i think here it's more or less more or less the same and that gives you just an advantage if you if somebody that knows what he's doing for many years can tell you about what is right or wrong even though of course it's just my opinion but my results and the way i'm the way i'm uh, progressing currently and over the last years i think gives me more or less like a um yeah like a solid base to tell those things um so how can you grow Again, a bit about me. Uh, as you see, I started playing poker like the second I got 18, probably. And you see, I won a pretty nice tournament uh, during my during my high school diploma time. But then I was playing, as you see, it was for almost 7,000 tournaments. I didn't really win money. I got down a bit, then got up again, got down, got up again, and so on and so forth. Uh, after that, I started using programs like Flopzilla, IC Miser 2, at that time still, Holder Manager, uh, Simple Preflop, and so on. And you see the curve finally was starting to go up. And now in the same amount from 7 to like 15,000 tournaments, so let's say 7.5 to 15,000, from roughly, what, where, where was I, like 5.5k, I'm up to over 20k, so I tripled, I tripled my winnings, and even even though like this this first tournament is still my biggest cash up to up to now, I, I managed to as you see make still some bigger caches, and yeah, I mean I I so I um, only play tournaments, so the variance is still pretty big, but you see uh, the way of the way I've been playing seems to be pretty good and i've done studying to prove that the play is good even though of course i still make some small mistakes in specific situations uh, where i pick up wrong bluffs or bluff or bluff on my own in this in the wrong time and so on but you see the curve is going up and uh, yeah therefore i think it just makes sense and it really like as you see i started investing investing some money at that time here and uh, it took some time. I, I also had a bad run. I mean, there's also happening. You see, over like uh, almost two and a half, three thousand tournaments, I got, I lost like two k uh, because it, it just didn't go. I just didn't win any uh, important all-ins. But then finally, through all the, all the studying, yeah, I finally hit the big score. And from then on, it yeah, just there's this uh, a solid going up, which is really nice. Uh, how can you now, after hearing all of this, what what do you need to do? And uh, as I already said in the beginning and throughout the throughout this uh, free uh, free course today, uh, we have our Academy of Poker course, 
And I think it's definitely, especially for beginners and players who now really want to start get professional, it's just a perfect solution. Uh, we start with four group lessons. So today it was just like a basic one. And we then have the uh, strategy for MTTs. We have the basics of poker math. We have the poker software and the hand reviews we do. So first, as I said, we'd go through different strategies for MTT tournament uh, for MTTs. So there, as, I, as I already told you, there are like four basic ones. And for that and some more, I tell you what the strategy in those tournaments is. And yeah, you got a base strategy already, how to play those. And that should make it way easier for you to uh, yeah, go through that field. Uh, then the basis of poker math, as I said, if, if, you're, if you don't know what um, pot odds mean, what outs mean, what odds means, what fold equity means, I will tell you in uh, this course then what this means and how you can use it in the best way uh, because it should be it or it needs to be easy for you to calculate those kind of things to yeah because you need to have your head uh, for open for other things when you play poker this should be like an automatism right uh, and that yeah i'll tell you or i'll teach you those things to make it easy Number three, we talk about the poker software. I've been talking about it quite a lot already, uh, but there we just go through it even more in detail. So I'll go through Holder Manager 2. I'll show you my HUD, for example. Um, I'll show you what the numbers mean that are shown on these on the stats that we're using for the Holder Manager, because there are a lot of numbers and they might be really uh, confusing. So I want to help you with that. And also show you about um, the Equilab, for example, or simple simple preflop. And last but not least, we'll do hand review. So if you guys, when you join me, you can send me some hands and we can go through them together. Because then there might be some, so I can just let you think about the hand and like tell me what you think about this. And then I, I can I can tell you my, my side of that. And then we can already, you know, have like a small get together and a small uh, brainstorming about different views and then I can show you what the best uh, the best view on that is and also because maybe sometimes group lessons might not be the best for every person because some people really like to go for the face-to-face -face stuff and we will also have two individual lessons and in those individual lessons we will again we will do a hand review um, if you maybe like f not feel safe uh, showing your hand to other people as well, you just want to let them be reviewed by me to get uh, a specific opinion just from me in that case. We can make that happen there. Uh, we will also go like through then more hands of yours. I will go through your stats so I can show show you what your current leaks are. So if you, you know, I see that your VPIP is too high or your fold to, fold to three bet is too low or stuff like that to show you, okay, that's why you're losing money because you call too often or you're not aggressive enough or you'd never bluff really. You don't, you never go for check raises. Uh, you're always being really passive and stuff like that. And also we can have a live session. So you just play. Uh, I'm watching you. Of course, I'll not tell you anything during the hand because that's not allowed, but, uh, I will hear what you are thinking current, uh, throughout the hand, and after you have played the hand, we will talk about. Uh, we will just talk about the hand, and I will give you my thought process on what I think you did wrong here, what I think you did good, and where where there's um, time to improve. And last but not least, if you have any questions about the software, of course, we will talk about that as well, because sometimes holder managers might be confusing because it's just too much. Same goes for Flopzilla. Sometimes maybe too many things you can do. And yeah, I'm happy to help you on that. And uh, yeah, normally um, the course would cost around 300 euros. So as I said, we have the four online lessons. We have the preflop charts that you're getting from us. So you know what to open from almost every big blind, um, yeah, amount of big blinds you're at from every position which is really nice also for three bets or bluffs and so on. And then you have the personal trainings where we, as said, discuss these specific things and normally it would cost you 300 euros. But the good thing is that the room that you're starting to play at will pay for your education. For that, uh, just contact, uh, just hit the link in the description below so one of our managers can get in contact with you 
and he will tell you how it's how this works uh I can briefly tell you, of course, as well. Um, you just have to, if you play on the website, you create rake, right? I told you about the rake. And in this case, because we have the agreement with the poker site, if you create a specific amount of rake, uh, then the poker website will, as like a, yeah, um, as like a gift or as a reach goal for one of your challenges, will then pay the, um, the education, so the mo the money this course is worth to us instead of you. And therefore, I mean, if you wanted to start playing anyway, it just makes it even easier for you because you can still just play and get our education, our information uh, on becoming a better player. As yeah, in addition to that, that you're that you're playing on the website anyway. So I think that is pretty nice. And uh, yeah, that is it for today's webinar or for today's free trial lesson uh, let me just wait if you have any questions currently i mean i see there's we have quite a few people watching currently which is of course nice i do like that i like to see that a lot hope you uh, liked it you can also just give me a like on the YouTube uh, because it also already, of course, helps us to be seen by more people and, uh, yeah, like spread more information from from us on that. Uh, other than that, yeah, I'll just wait like one or two more minutes. But, yeah, other than that, uh, that will be it for today. Uh, make sure to get in touch with our managers. Uh, tomorrow at 8 p.m. we will have the first premium lesson. As said, we will talk about the strategy of MTTs tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to see you there tomorrow then. And have your questions or have your notebooks prepared. Have questions prepared for that. And I think you're then already one step closer to becoming a professional poker pro or at least becoming a profitable poker player because that's already just a small amount of players who are really profitable in what they're doing. Uh, yeah, I'll just then end the stream for today. If you have any questions, I, will, I or my colleagues will see them below the video in the comment section anyway. So we can then help you out there if you have any questions or if you're in any way unsure about what this really is about. And yeah, if you if you didn't understand anything, everything from here. Uh, but other than that, thanks for watching today's video. I hope to see you guys in the next days in our premium course as well or in my next stream when I'm on Twitch or YouTube, uh, because that will be coming up soon as well. So thanks again for watching. Bye, guys.